Great. So hi, everybody. Um, I'm Debbie from Sweet Paprika Designs. Um, I know a few of you are people that we've met before and have the pleasure of uh, seeing at our knitting teas sometimes. Um, but for those of you who don't know us, uh, it's myself and my sister Elizabeth who run the company. Um, and uh, I'm going to be mostly doing the hosting today because Elizabeth had a baby just a month ago. And uh, I also had a baby this summer, but he's almost five months now. So I get to be the, the one on camera today for the most of the time. Um, and uh, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about our business. And then um, we'll show you a bit of a tour of the types of yarns uh, that we sell. And then I put together a kind of a, um, a collection of things to show you that I feel like are good kind of maybe pre-holiday day either gift ideas if you have another knitter that you want to give a gift to, or maybe if you have non-knitters that you want to ask for gifts from, or um, that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Um, I'm coming to you today from Montreal. So that's um, unceded indigenous territory. That's the traditional uh, um, lands of the Ganyang Kehaga people. Um, if anyone else wants to make a land acknowledgement, uh, we invite you to do so in the chat as well. Oh, and there's Elizabeth with uh, the tiny, tiny little bundle attached to her. So, um, uh, maybe we will start. Uh, I'll just talk a little bit about our company, and then Elizabeth, you can show the things that you got so that you can leave if you need to. Um, so, uh, we're, as I said, we're in Montreal, so we have a studio here where we dye our own yarns. We source the base yarns, some of them from, um, internationally. So we have, you know, super washed merinos that come from, uh, South America. Um, we have some, uh, other, like a silk and linen yarn that the linens from the, uh, Europe and the silk is from China. Um, but we also are really focusing in the last few years on uh, Canadian wool and getting to know really more closely where our products are coming from. So we're going to talk, I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later as I take you through, through the tour of our yarns. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that most of our yarns are um, in the kind of semi-solid tonal range of uh, hand dye techniques. So we don't do a lot of crazy a lot of different colors in the same skein because we tend to want yarns that we can work with for the patterns that we design because that's another part of our, our business we design patterns um, and so we want something that has a lot of life and vibrancy from it but in it but is uh plays well with other techniques um like doing cables or lace or that kind of thing it isn't gonna fight you to see the pattern because you've got too many colors going at the same time um, I don't know if I'm, for, oh, so just a quick thing to note is that we are doing a coupon code for uh, viewers today. So our coupon code is FLA2021, uh, which Margaret, who's being my tech support, I think is going to put in the chat for me. Um, and uh, the, the coupon code is good for 15% off anything on our website uh, until the end of the day tomorrow. Um, am I forgetting anything? Hopefully not. Um, so Elizabeth is going to show we had uh, two of her designs that came out this year, our um, a rainbow heart kid sweater, and then she we just just released an adult version of the same uh, pattern. I don't have the adult sample to show you because it's uh, with the person who is going to model it for us. Um, but uh, Elizabeth has the kids version. So that's um what size is that one that one's the size four right uh, yeah with the dark blue contrast the dusk for the contrast in the back yeah. um, and then i also have on here this is the larger size this is the size six slash eight depending on the size of your kid um which i now need to undo the cuff and extend a little bit because my Former six-year-old is now getting close to eight and uh, needs a little extra length. But um, yeah, so and this is the corduroy, the dark brown in the back. Uh, so the pattern is sized from two up to a size kind of 12 or 14. 
um, with six different sizes. So there should be should be something for everyone. Um, and then the adult pattern is also sized for seven sizes from uh, 35 and a half inch bust up to about a 70 um, or so finished bust size. So again, good, good range of sizes. Um, so, and the yarn that Elizabeth used for those patterns is our Winfield, it's a worsted weight yarn. It's um, all sourced and spun and dyed in Canada. Um, from We get the wool from a farm in Ontario and um, we put together a little rainbow sets so that you can do the color work without having to buy a full skein of every color, especially for the kids version. So we have rainbow mini skeins. We have two different options. This is the, the bright rainbow that works. Oh, I got my, well, my rainbow out of order. Here we go. Um, this, this one's the bright rainbow that works really well for a dark colored background color like Elizabeth was just showing you. Um, and then we have, oh, so that they come, we ship them in these cute boxes and we have a deeper rainbow. I'll get this out to show you the colors that works better on um, brighter colored background colors. So if you wanted like a natural or we did the adult sweater, which I'll have a photo to show you later um, in a like a gray background color. So the, the dark rainbow is this one and it works better on that. And this one is a, actually a, a larger skein size. We have two different skein sizes. So um, if you're doing a kid's sweater, you need the 30 gram ones. And these are uh, 55 grams are the bigger ones and that that will work for any of the sweater sweater sizes for the adult sweater. Um, I think, Margaret, if you could find the link for, um, we I put together a link that has all of the rainbow heart sweaters and the yarn and the patterns together so that if you're interested, you can go and uh, find it all there and you don't have to hunt around our website. Um, speaking of which, if anyone is on our website during this, sh this uh, time and you see something that you have questions about or you want to ask about, feel free to poke around and uh, ask me and uh, you can either unmute yourself and ask out loud or just uh, put in the chat. We'll try and keep an eye on that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, I think that for now, uh, is there anything else we wanted to say, Elizabeth, about uh, the Rainbow Hearts? I don't, I don't think so. Um, it's knit from the top down. I don't just, uh, for those of you who like, like knitting your sweaters in that direction um, and with raglan shaping. So for the kids sizes, it's a, a straight raglan shaping, pretty standard. For the adult sizes, I did do, uh, compound raglan shaping. So it's a little bit more following the line of the body and make sure that for the larger sizes, you don't end up with sleeves that are out of proportion with the body. So um, just a little, little information about that. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be around. I might uh, turn my video off at some point, but I'll be around in the chat as well. So nice to see everyone. Uh, great. So I think I'm going to do a screen share again to show you some of our yarns. So um, I was hoping actually today to do this from our studio so I could do a little bit of showing you there. And uh, our internet got disconnected this week and is not reconnected yet. So I brought everything home, but I don't have everything with me, um, obviously. So um, I'm going to do the, the yarn tour kind of through all of our different base yarns um, as a slideshow. Um, is there, I do have a, a skein or two of every uh, yarn that we show. So there's some things that I can show up close more if people have questions or if they want to know more that they don't see in the, the photos. Um, and as I said, anytime you have a question, just uh, jump in and uh, ask. And um, yeah, so I'm going to see if I can get the, the screen share work. Let's do this. Losing my zoom, and there we go. There we go. So, this 
Oh, this is just a reminder that if you join our newsletter list, um, we have a, a free PDF of 50 different knitting and crochet stitch patterns that you can get um, by uh, downloading our, or you can get the PDF download if you join our mailing list. Um, and there is a link to join our mailing list on the homepage of our website, or um, maybe Margaret can find that as well to put in the chat if, uh, if you have a second, Margaret. Um, but yeah, let's start with the yarn. So this is Arietta, which is uh, one of our yarns that we've been dyeing for all, like since our business began, basically, or since we started dyeing yarn. Um, it's a 50-50 wool and silk blend lace weight, and it um, uh, is really, really delicate and airy, and you can make beautiful shawls out of it. Um, also, really nice lace, nice lace weight sweaters I've seen for really kind of lightweight, something to throw on in the sweater time, sweater time, summertime. Um, so that's Arietta. Um, Next, we have Grazioso, which is also a lace weight. So these are maybe not the best time of year for knitting with lace weight, but I just wanted to mention them. Um, so this one is the silk and linen blend, and it's also a great one for shawls or uh, lightweight sweaters. Um, and it comes in, what do we have there? Uh, 16 different colors. Um, Pizzicato is a uh, blue face luster and nylon blend. So this is really our sock knitter sock yarn. Um, it has a little bit of nylon in there to get a bit of extra strength. And the blue face luster has a really great luster to the um, yarn. It takes the dye really well. And this is the one, one of the yarns that we do put a little more variation. You can kind of see um, in those little color swatches there that um, some of them have more highlights and darks and different colors within the same skein um, than the other, like, like the lace weights that we just showed. I have fun playing with, with dyeing colors for these ones. Um, yes, uh, yeah, Joanne, that's, uh, blue base luster is a really good, good sock yarn. I, I enjoy using it for that. Um, and then Presto, again, this is one of the ones that we have more variation in. It's a, uh, um, our bulkiest yarn, it's a uh, merino and nylon blend, and it's a very uh, kind of uh, loosely spun, or not, not loosely, but it's a more fluffy um, two-ply yarn. So it's really soft and uh, gorgeous to wear. It's something that um, we use for hats and cowls and that kind of thing. And it's, um, you can make a really quick one skein project. I feel like I have. So this is this is a pattern that um, Elizabeth designed. It's like a free pattern for a cowl. So it's just one skein, really quick little neck warmer. This would be a good thing to do if you're needing last minute Christmas gifts or that kind of thing. Um, crescendo is our gradient mini skeins. So we do, uh, there's six skeins in a set and 20 grams per skein. So you can get a pretty decent uh, shawl or project out of one set. Um, and we try and do them as like really um, gradual gradations between the colors. So you really see uh, the gradient, even like, even though you're switching from one skein to another, it uh, really shows as a continuous gradient when you knit them up together. So I have some I'll show maybe in person I don't know if people can see my camera right now, but there's this is like the blue to brown one. Um, and we have some of them that you can kind of put together. So you see the at the bottom of the screen and the top or the bottom right, um, the winter green and the black spruce are two green ones that if you put them together, you could have a longer 12 skein set. So if you want to like a bigger project that has a single continuous gradient, you can uh, do that, maybe, do I have anything I can show? Are people seeing my screen as well as the screen share? Is that, uh, maybe somebody could give me feedback on that? Yes, um, I can see your face too. Yes, Debbie. Yes, okay, so, because I'm like, wanting to make sure people can actually see. So this is uh, one of the purple gradient sets knit up into a shawl. It's a very open pattern, so it goes um, quite far, but you can see you can get quite a, a large, a project out of one set. 
Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I knit that on five millimeter needles. Um, so I'm going to move on. So the next yarn is actually a, um, uh, the Molto Crescendo, which, um, is a matching full skein that goes with the gradient mini skeins. So if you want to, for example, if you wanted to do a sweater that had a gradient yoke and then had, uh, the, a solid color for the body and sleeves. You could do the uh, crescendo as the yoke, and then the molto crescendo is the matching or contrasting solid color. I've also seen some really, really great, um, trying to remember the name of the pattern, but shawls that have a, a stripe, gradient stripe pattern with a contrasting a color in between the gradient stripes. So that can be a really nice effect as well. Um, I'm going to move on here to Minuet which um, is our DK weight superwash merino. Um, and I think I just have sly, a slide for the minuet, but so we have three yarns that are all superwash merino um, and that we do the same color range on all those three yarns. So we have a fingering weight, which is Mesa de Voce, the minuet, um, which is a DK and the Andante, which is worsted. So no matter what kind of gauge you're looking for or what kind of project. I mean, obviously that we don't have lace weight in this one or the super bulkies, but within that kind of middle range, we have the three yarns that can uh, cover those. Um, and these are really tonal semi-solid kind of colors that have a lot of life and vibrancy to them. Um, and uh, they're kind of, uh, I just said, Joanne says she loves her minuet. Thanks, Joanne. I'm really glad that you like working with it. Um, uh, yeah, so the Andante and the Mesa de Boche are also warm and squishy um, superwash yarns. So um, I like using them for things that if I'm doing like a gift for kids or uh, babies, things like because they are superwash, I would still recommend uh, not drying them in the dryer necessarily. Um, depending on how hot your dryer is, but uh, they're a little bit more easy care and uh, can deal with, you know, baby spit up and all those things. Um, next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our um, Canadian yarns. So we have three, now three Canadian yarns that um, are, I just realized I don't have on hand, the one that I really wanted to talk about is, I left it out in the hallway, so I have to go grab that. But um, we have Winfield, which is the worsted weight two ply, and that's what Elizabeth used for the um, rainbow heart sweater. Um, and then we have Sutton, which is a bulky weight, it's three ply. Um, and then our new yarn, which we just put up this week, is called Filigree, and it's a one ply sport weight, which we didn't have a sport weight before, so we're really excited to have that. Um, and we have uh, these uh, 20 colors. Um, so they are all sourced from a farm in Ontario um, called uh, Circle R. They produce lamb and like have sheep for meat, but they also, obviously the sheep that they have for meat produce wool and the farmer, Romy Schill, is really, really proactive about trying to figure out how to not just have the wool be a byproduct of the, the production of her sheep farm, but to be a real like asset to it and as well. So she does yarn, which we source from her. She also has pillows and wool batting for people who do quilting. Um, she started to do, uh, she has like felt and uh, all kinds of other products. She's really, you know, pushing the boundaries as a farmer entrepreneur to make sure that her there's the the wool is really being used for something and not just being shipped to China um, for you know a dollar a pound or whatever, which is kind of has historically been the case with a lot of wool in Canada that's uh, grown and not really um, not really utilized in Canada. It uh, ends up being exported. Um, so 
Uh, I put a, a, a link in the chat to Romy and her farm because I really encourage you to check it out. I've got some brand new pillows from her and uh, if you're interested in other things besides just yarn that come from sheep, it's uh, worth, worth checking out. And I'm going to go run. Elizabeth, do you want to talk more for two seconds? I'm going to go run get the bag of filigree, which is not in my room. Sure. So I know you probably can't see me, but I am here. Um, so we've been working with Romy for, it's been two or three years now and uh, have really enjoyed watching her progress and her business expand as she discovers more and more things to do with wool. And uh, we're so happy to have the one ply, which is the sport weight, which I've been uh, campaigning for for a while. I really like using sport weight. Um, so I'm happy to, that we were able to bring in uh, a, a third yarn coming from Circle R, coming from Romy's farm. Um, I'm sure some of you probably already are familiar with her and uh, follow her on Instagram. She's always putting all kinds of information about uh, life on the farm and sheep shearing and all kinds of fun stuff. So I'll, I'll find the link for that too, uh, but you can go ahead. If and I'm back with yarn. So um, this is the, the one ply. So um, you can see that it's it's got a bit of a twist to it, um, but it's really nice to work with. Um, Elizabeth's been working on a baby cardigan pattern that we're actually have uh, some preview knitters knitting up versions as well, or right now. And I just worked on this, this little beret is my first project in that yarn. So um, it's really lightweight. There's a lot of yardage per skein. Uh, Joanne's asking if it's soft or more crunchy. So it is, the wool is a dorset base, um, so it's not like a pure breed, uh, you know, breeding it to her specifications with working for her on her farm. So it's not a any, like it's not a pure blue face luster or whatever, but it's mostly dorset, um, which is a really, um, got a lot of spring and bounce to it. It is not a super fine wool. So it's not a merino, it's not a rambouillet. Um, it is a little bit uh, rougher in that uh, regard. It doesn't, I don't find it particularly scratchy. I don't have particularly sensitive skin. So if you have a lot, like if you're really sensitive, you might not want to wear it on your neck or, you know, uh, as a headband that's going to be on your ears, a place that's mo a more sensitive body part. But I do find for myself, I don't, I don't mind it. Um, and it uh, is really... I find it really like holds its shape well. It has a lot of memory. It kind of, Elizabeth has remarked a couple of times that it kind of has an elasticity to it that it, um, no, you might find you get a similar gauge even on a couple of different needle sizes with this yarn because it just wants to be in a certain shape. Um, and so that to me makes it really good for things like mittens or harder wearing sweaters, things that are not, you're not going to worry about pilling as much actually in this yarn as a softer yarn. Um, and I don't know if that answers your question, Joanne, but I, I wouldn't describe it as crunchy, um, but it is not, if you're looking for something soft like a merino, this is not it. You wouldn't want to go with something a little, a little finer. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next slide now, I think. Ah, so yes, this is just a reminder. So we have the 15% off discount that is valid this weekend for you with the coupon code that we put in the chat. Um, but if you are not shopping this weekend, if you're just shopping later, or if you want a whole lot of skeins, um, we have some of our yarns, we have sweater quantity discounts. So we wanna make it more affordable to make larger projects in hand dyed yarn. Um, so we have great uh, graduated discounts depending on how much you're purchasing. Um, and you would see that on the yarn page when you're on our website. If it's uh, if the yarn is eligible for these discounts, um, you'll see it and you can um, use that as like a coupon code in when you check out. Um, let me know. Uh, oh, and Elizabeth is offering to show the baby sweater in filigree, which uh, yeah, so maybe I'm going to um, pause the screen share. Do you now not see the screen share? 
I'm still seeing your screen share at the moment. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. If I stop it, how does that go? Yes, you, I just okay. see. You. Now you see me. Um, so maybe Elizabeth, if you want to um, show, yeah, your little baby sweater in the sport weight. So this is yeah. the sport weight. Um, just to show another example, um, and this was the kind of the feature. I did this in linen stitch so that I was able to do some embroidery. This is based on some uh, traditional Transylvanian embroidery patterns, uh, the cross stitch. Um, the pattern's not out yet, but it is currently being uh, preview knit by some preview knitters. Anyway, I just had it on hand, so I thought I would show you the, the little sweater. Uh, yeah. And well, well my, my little screen is a little bigger, I'll show you again. So this is, this is the texture of the yarn. This is the forget me not colorway. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about, um, maybe are there any questions so far? Does anyone want to jump in if you have questions, things that you want to ask about? Um, yeah, let me know. Um, but the next thing I wanted to talk about is another Canadian farmer that we work with. So we uh, every year buy basically as much fleece as we can afford from a farmer named Allison Brown, who her farm is called Pine Hollow Farms. And she is much, um, uh, much less into the entrepreneurial end of things, I think, than Romy. She's not, you don't find her on Instagram. You have to like look her up a little bit if you wanna get in touch with her. But she is growing really beautiful wool um, from a Rambouillet cross uh, sheep uh, flock that she calls Norbouillet because her farm is near Norwood, Ontario. And uh, it's really, she's focusing on creating her own uh, stock uh, there that is to, uh, sheep that are acclimatized to her little microclimate and that are growing the type of wool that she wants to grow. So it's really much more uh, focused fiber farm there. And um, we get two types of yarn spun from her flock. One of them is a DK weight and one of them is a fingering weight. So the DK weight is called Norwood and we did pre-orders for that this year and we are so almost totally sold out. So it's actually not even listed on our website right now. I have one skein of, oh, it's not showing up as bright as it is in real, reality, but one skein of bright green. And I have one set of um, two, two skeins that were, it's a collaboration we did with Faye Kennington of Yuki Knits um, for a new pattern that she just put out. So these aren't on our website because we only have the these left. If anyone wants them, email me and we'll I'll, I'll work it out. But so there's these, these are the last of the DK for this year. Um, the other thing uh, yarn that we do is the fingering weight and we do that in mini skein sets. Um, so it's called Alora and we had a little bit left after pre-orders this year. So we just put it on our website last yesterday afternoon, I guess. And we have eight sets left of that one. So they are listed online. Um, and uh, they uh, are, I'm gonna show actually, so examples of the um, patterns that Elizabeth has designed with them because we do have some of these sets left. So one of the patterns is the portraiture mitts. So these are um, fingerless mitts done in a color work pattern that you could do with just one of the sets. And then the other one is the Good Morning Starshine hat pattern. So it has this kind of starburst crown and then uh, color work around the, the brim. Um, so those ones, the portraiture mitts um, are done in the Lantern Hill colorway that's showing a little bit yeah, it's not a little hard to see the yeah maybe if I back up the um but the, the purples are kind of blending into each other um but that's the one for the portraiture mitts and then the this one is called home is the sailor and it's the one that Elizabeth used for the hat I think there's one or two of each of them left 
Um, and then we have this one I wanted to show because I think it would be a great alternative to the Lantern Hill for the portraiture mist. So if you like this pattern, but the purples are not your thing, uh, you could go with the greens and it would work really well as well. Um, and we do have a few of them that are more like traditional gradient as well. So there's this one that's the, the yellow to orange. And I have one that is more yellow to greens and blues. So if you're interested in those, I would suggest heading over to the website and picking them up because there's really only one or two of each color left and some of the colors are already sold out. Um, yeah, just one of the differences um, between the two farms that uh, Debbie mentioned is that Allison, who we get the fleece for the Norwood and Alora, only shears her flock once a year. So we really only have the opportunity to buy the fleece to be spun for us once a year. So that's why we're saying when it's gone, it's gone until next year. Um, whereas Romy, she has a much larger scale farm. So she is shearing several times a year. So it's, I mean, still there's sometimes a supply issues, especially during COVID, um, but uh, it's much easier for us to get it throughout the year rather than just once. For sure. It's also the way she, the for kind of a, a sheep anecdote for those of you who like, well, it's a, the way that the flock is managed and the breed of sheep um, mean that Romy is breeding her um, uh, sheep in a continuous year round cycle. So some sheep, you would only have lambs in the spring and hers because of the particular breed, she can have staggered um, lambing all year round. And she says that she likes to shear them right before lambing because then they're nice and clean and easy to manage. So um, not that the same sheep will be uh, having a multiple uh, shearings per year, but there's she has different groups. And so she's having shearings throughout the year. Um, the Donna wants to know what the other suggestion for not purple um, is the this, hundred this acre one woods. is called hundred acre woods. So uh, I don't know if anyone has on the Allura page and looking at the, the names, um, uh, you may notice that they're all named for children's books. So that one is a, you know, in honor of Winnie the Pooh. Um, I think, I think we're good with that for now. I'm just wanting to maybe, um, yeah, I'm going to show a few more slides of things that we've already talked about or just to show more detail maybe. And then I'll go uh, into my um, kits and other little notions and stuff that we have on our website that you might be interested in. Um, so let's see if I do this. Yeah, so we are at the sweater quantity discount. We're going to move on to, so this is the Allura. It has a little bit more detail there you can read. So there's five mini skeins in each kit, um, total of 410 yards and um, uh, yeah, $48 uh, Canadian per set. Um, this is, these are some of the pictures of the fleece. So you can see it's really crimpy and those are the lambs from uh, Allison's farm. Um, and this is, so we didn't do it this year because uh, I was pregnant in the spring and uh, uh, COVID makes everything harder in terms of transport, but in previous years, we've actually gotten the raw fleece from Allison and done all of the preliminary washing ourselves and then sent it to the mill to um, spin, which was really great to be really hands-on with the whole process. This year, we just said, here you go, mills, wash it for us. I'm too pregnant to deal with it. Um, so these are the portraiture knit mitts. So the, the purple colorway is called Lantern Hill that uh, um, Elizabeth used for the sample. Um, and then this is the Good Morning Starshine hat that I showed. So you can see, I didn't put it on because I have a little ponytail, but you can see what it looks like. It's kind of a, a got the, the tam shaping at the top, but it's not as wide as a tam. It's more of a Sochi hat at the back. Um, and then this is the other one I wanted to show some photos of the rainbow heart sweater that we showed at the beginning. 
um, cause you can see there the adult version. So that one's the, in the gray um, main color with the darker rainbow set. And then the two kids ones have the bright rainbow set that shows up well on the dark colors. Um, and uh, then this is the one I wanted to show cause I'm gonna show you the kit but I don't actually have the slippers. I think Elizabeth, you have the slipper samples. I don't know where the slipper samples are. It's kind of hard to show them on screen anyway without putting them on your feet and trying to put your feet above your head. So I thought I would just show the photo of this one. So um, this is, uh, we're, we have a bunch of kits on our website that uh, combine our knitting patterns with our yarns and often we'll put together kits for things where you just need a little bit of a contrast color or you need one little accessory to do the kit um, to make the project so we put things together so you don't have to buy a full skein when you only need a tiny bit of color or if you um, these ones have matching buttons that go with the um, yarn so um, I'm just going to I'll show the last two slides that I have um, so we have another one is the little knots kit that also comes with buttons. Um, and then this is a, a kit that we did with the gradient sets. So I can show that as well, but that the photos really show off um, how the gradient sets work for that one. Um, so I'm going to stop the screen share now and uh, show you. So this again, we have our nice little cardboard boxes and the Capellia slippers which are, are named for a ballet, just uh, if anyone wants, is interested in where the name comes from. So it comes in a nice box and you get a whoops, paper copy of the pattern. Um, and it does have a download code so you can get a digital copy as well if you prefer working from a PDF rather than a paper copy. And then um, you have your main color, these ones, I picked dark colors to show and they're not showing up super well today. So maybe if I hold them close to the camera. Yeah, so we have the, this is our Sutton bulky weight wool. So the slippers work up really quickly. Um, and so we have the um, main color, contrast color and buttons all come in a nice little box. So that is one kit that I wanted to show. Another one is the um, little knots cardigan. So this is the one that I had the slides. So a super cute baby knit, um, pretty gender neutral. If you have babies that you don't know whether it's going to be a boy or a girl, or if the parents are looking for more gender, gender neutral clothing, um, this is a great one. Uh, we only have one kit of this online right now because we're, we're running out of buttons. I have to buy more. So uh, that's, uh, there is one available. Um, and uh, another kit, couple of kit options that um, these are seasonally appropriate potentially um, Christmas stockings. Um, we have three different uh, patterns all designed actually by our sister Margaret who's helping out with the chat today. Um, oh and Barbara says she made the Capilia slippers and they were a fun knit. Thanks. I'm glad that you enjoyed making them. Um, I think they're pretty fast to do. I haven't done them myself but Elizabeth that they whipped up pretty quickly because they're in a bulky weight. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, so, and this is the Argyle stocking. Um, and I don't have a sample of the Holly one, but uh, they we have kits for all three of those. Um, or you, the, all of the things that I talk about as kits, if you have a major stash and you don't want to invest in more yarn, but you're interested in the project, we do sell just the PDF as well. Um, so if you already have, this one's knit in the DK weight minuet. So if you already have DK weight in all kinds of uh, appropriate colors for Christmas stockings and you just want the pattern, those are available as well. Um, oh, is that uh, Millie? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get myself for now. <laughs> um, so another, another kit, option that we have are, these are um, called the theme and variation socks and they are a design of Elizabeth. And they are, I would say more for an intrepid or experienced knitter um, or 
just I would I wouldn't do this as your first foray into color work necessarily because there are several colors per row in some of the rows, but they're really fun and really pretty. And again, you only need a little bit of you know the the some of the colors in this one. So we do kits that um, include all of the little bits. Um, the green one, I have one in stock right now. The blue one, I don't have any listed in stock, but I could make one up. So if anyone wants a blue kit, um, email me and I'll figure it out for you. Um, something just to put out there, um, for all of these kits, um, or you know, if you're ordering yarn for another project on our website, we recently, this past year, started carrying knitting needles on our website particularly because we thought, well, we we're selling these kits. And, you know, if you want to just have a one-stop shop for everything and you don't have the needles on hand, then you can get the needles as well. We've tried to make sure we have the sizes for most kits. So we have, we have um, the Knitter's Pride Zing needles. So they come, these are all the double pointed ones. So they'd be great for the sock patterns or the slippers. Um, and they're all color coded by size, which I really like. So it makes it easy to find the ones that match each other. Um, they're metal, metal needles. Um, and uh, we also, so those are the double pointed ones. And these are the, we have some of the circulars, fixed circulars as well. So we don't have every size. Um, well, we have most sizes of the double points. The, circular ones, we have kind of a, a selection of the ones that we use most often for our patterns. So if you're looking for um, a full project, getting everything all at once, you can buy the needles as well. Um, and another little extra that uh, you can pick up while you're on our site, um, or if you're like looking for something extra to get you to the free shipping, if you're a few dollars off, we've, um, started carrying, these are wool wash bars. So they're all organic ingredients made locally here in Montreal. Um, there's three, three scents. So unscented lavender and eucalyptus. So um, these are a good alternative to, um, oh, holding the lavender one upside down. <laughs> good alternative to eucalyptus or soap or that kind of thing. I like them because they're like, the packaging is just a little bit of cardboard. Um, we'll wrap them in a little bit of brown paper when we ship them out so that they don't uh, rub off on anything else in the package, but you're not uh, getting plastic bottles every time you buy your wool wash with these ones. Um, what else am I missing here? Oh, another, another kit that I have the samples for. Um, so Elizabeth designed one of her very first designs actually was a fish in the sea socks. So this is a, a sock with a little, oh, no, that nobody ever dined in the end for, but uh, okay. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, right? Um, little wave pattern um, at the cuff and on the toe, you have the same wave pattern and some little fish embroidered on the toe with duplicate stitch. So this was something that we made up from some of our first dye experiments. Honestly, we had a bunch of different blues, some pale blue, dark blue, some variegated blue. And Elizabeth came up with this pattern to use all of the, the different little sample skeins that we had. And people liked the pattern so much that we started in a, uh, putting together the kit because especially for the little little fish, you only need a tiny little bit of the colors. Um, and then I think it was for our 10th business anniversary, um, Elizabeth designed a cowl. So this is the, the fish in the sea cowl, which is um, with a heavier weight yarn. So the fish end up a little more graphic and easier to see. Um, and then we have little fish in the sea mittens as well. So you can do, do a whole outfit head to toe of fish in the sea. And we have kits for those as well. So um, it would come with all the little colors you need for the embroidery and the um, colors for the different blue color work as well. Um, I, think, I think I'm almost through the knitting kits. I have, um, a couple more. So this is the Tea Cozy Cinnamon Brioche. So 
for those of you who've been seeing all of the fancy brioche patterns, if you're like intimidated by doing a giant shawl in brioche or another kind of pattern, this is a great starter pattern that um, has a lot of different techniques in one small project that it's not too intimidating. So um, you do brioche in the round to start with because it's connected and then you do brioche flat um, and then there's some decreases to get up to the top of the tea cozy. So you're practicing a whole bunch of little um, techniques on a small project. So that's a great one for if you're learning brioche. And it's reversible. Um, pardon? And it's reversible. Oh yes, I, I should take it off and show the other side. There's the... Choose which side you want out. Yes. Um, so we have a couple different color options for that on our, on our website. Um, and again, the pattern is available as well. If you have yarn that you would love to use for a tea cozy and you don't need the kit, you can always buy the pattern on its own. Um, what else do I have here? So we have, I was talking earlier about the Winfield and Sutton yarns and now the filigree as well um, being great for um, like mittens and that kind of thing. And one of the things that it's, I've used it for a couple of times is saltwater mittens. So these are books that are published um, on the East Coast. It's two women from Newfoundland who are writing books of it with traditional Newfoundland knitting patterns. Um, so they're all, this one is all color work mitten designs. This is the original one. Um, and then they also have a couple of other ones. Um, so this was saltwater gifts that um, has some other other ideas and so uh, hats, mitts, slippers, all kinds of things. But they're all knit with this kind of rustic Canadian yarn. So um, really great ideas for what to do with that kind of yarn. And um, we have these available on our website. Either you can buy just the book by itself um, or you can pair it with some of our yarn as a kit. So we'll send two skeins of yarn. You can pick those colors. Um, and uh, that will be good for doing these, these color work mittens um, or some of the other projects. Um, and I have a sample pair that I knit um, in the Winfield. So this is the Dusk Dark Blue colorway and Shiitake, which is like the kind of mushroomy neutral color. Um, the books themselves are really fun to read too because they have all kinds of kind of uh, local lore or yeah the... so it's not it's not just the knitting patterns there's all kinds of there's a lot of beautiful photos um they show the the patterns in a lot of different variations but there's um also especially the saltwater gifts so it's all about different holidays and how they're celebrated in newfoundland and there's like all kinds of different little side notes about uh traditions from Newfoundland. And uh, the other thing that I didn't really mention about the mittens is um, the, the tradition there, I'm just gonna try and find a photo, is to do trigger mitts. So you have the index finger is separated from the other fingers as well. So you get more dexterity uh, while still keeping your hand warm. So uh, that's, that's the tradition. A lot of the patterns um, can, you could easily, um, adapt to make a full mitten like this one. Uh, I, I decided not to do the trigger finger on because I didn't need that, that dexterity for putting it on and walking the dog. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a kind of a fun Canadian tradition or Newfoundland tradition is uh, those trigger mitts. Um, I think we have about 10 more minutes, I think, right? Is that, that correct, Here we go. Um, so I have a few other things that I am going to talk about or show, but I really love if anyone has any questions to let me know and uh, we can share any things that you're interested in. Or if there's yeah, anything you think. Cindy, and I do have a couple questions. Sure, yeah. It, it's so yeah. nice to see both again. I, I've um, ordered your yarn in the past and it's just beautiful. So Thank you. hi. Hi, <laughs> thanks for being here. Yeah. So I'm on your website and in your mini sets, mm -hmm. the, in your mini sets, the heaviest, uh, the heaviest weight yarn is that's available is the Winfield. Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and then the choice is either 30 gram mi uh, mini skein or 
55 gram. Yeah. So those are a, a newish product that we've just, or in terms of like packaging in them in that way. And we really put them together to coincide with the rainbow sweaters. So that's why they're in those particular um, size is, is because the 30 grams will do any of the child size sweaters. And then the 55 grams will do any of the adult size sweaters. Of course, you could use them for whatever project you want, but yeah, that, yeah. that's why yeah, they're yeah. in those particular configurations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been kind of looking for, you know, mini gradients or rainbows in heavier weight yarns and been a little bit surprised that they're not that easy to find sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is your, um, the cowl with the fishies. Mm -hmm. So I am right now working on my first ever um, stranded color work project having lots of challenges with how to hold the yarn and you know tension and that kind of thing so I'm just actually doing a lot of practicing but I've also been looking for a cowl as a practice um, mm -hmm. and so if I'm understanding it right the the wave in the pattern is a strand of color work and then the fishies are duplicate stitch right exactly so you have uh five rows of color work I think that's all. and that's, yeah, it. that's it yeah. okay yeah. that's good <laughs> Yeah. So you could take it as just a little bit to practice in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, and then I have not done duplicate stitch. Is that a big deal or not a big deal? Some people are, I, so some people do not enjoy duplicate stitch. So you will have to try because yeah. um, I, I don't mind it at all. It's it, like, it's embroidery on knitting basically. So if you like embroidery, um, then you'll probably find it fun. Um, some people, I think uh maybe I don't know don't yeah. want, want to be working with the knitting needles and not the, the darning needle right? okay so it's, it's done with the done darning with needle darning on needle. top of the, dark, yeah. the darker blue that you've already knit exactly and yeah it's entirely up to you how complex or how simple you do I mean we give you the, the instructions for the fish but then the placement of them and the colors that's that's entirely up to you so I've you know you could keep it quite simple I've seen people go very creative and start putting octopus and all kinds of sea stuff that, you know, we didn't put in the pattern, um, but it's kind of a, a, a canvas for you to create your own sea and, and uh, do what you like with it. Great. Yeah, the pattern's adorable. I, I like the different colors that you've worked in there. It's very whimsical, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thanks uh, for jumping oh, into your questions. It's nice yeah. to get uh, feedback. Uh, does anyone else have anything that they are looking at that they have questions about or something that you want me to go back to? Because I kind of went through in a bit of a whirlwind of all of this stuff. Um, I don't know. Do you need to I'll put the um, coupon code once more to you maybe? And yeah. do you need to give a, a, a bingo a treasure hunt word? Oh, yes. Uh, the um, our, our word for today is Canadian. If you're doing the keywords uh, game, that's uh, our word for the week today. And um, uh, also Elizabeth or Margaret, if you could find our newsletter mailing list link to sign up. Um, I think Margaret, it's at the top of the document I gave you. Uh, you can put that in the chat as well. So if you're interested in what our, we're doing, we send out um, newsletters with you know updates, not, not Hopefully not too often, so you don't don't get tired of seeing us in your inbox. But uh, if you're interested in things like the Canadian uh, wool that I talked about, and you didn't get any this year, or it's not the right time for you, and you want to know when we do it again, um, our mailing list is the best way to find out all those details. Um, and there was just a question about how to get the pattern. So for Betsy, I put the link to our website. You can also find. Um, almost everything on Ravelry as well. Um, so depending on their their PDF downloads, the patterns. So yeah. If you buy if you buy a kit, it does include the paper pattern as well. But uh, mm -hmm. if you're looking for just the pattern, um, it's a uh, PDF. Um, yeah. And the last thing I kind of have here that uh, I'll just sneak in at the end. Um, these are good. Uh, gift ideas as well. We have um, most most of what we sell is stuff that we create ourselves. So the yarns that we dye, the patterns that we design. We also occasionally find things like the saltwater books that we like enough that we say, okay, we're gonna 
put them on our website and share them with other people. Um, and this is one of them. So we met this person um, at the Twist Festival a couple of years ago when festivals were still happening. Um, she's based out of, uh, I think, Toronto or Toronto, Toronto area. Um, and uh, she does natural dye kits. So we have a kit for doing indigo dyeing. So um, it has everything you need to do your own first indigo vat if you're learning interested in learning how to do uh, dyeing with indigo. indigo. Um, and that works well for either yarn or fabric. Um, and uh, we also have a couple of kits that she does. So there's a clay resist kit and a block printing kit. So these are more for use on fabrics, um, but they're really cool effects. So you can make patterns on fabrics using her um, block printing or the, the resist. So the, the block printing is you need a, something to stamp with. So you could do like a, a wooden block or a lino cut or even a potato cut or whatever you want to use for your stamp. Um, and the clay resist uh, is more for painting on or doing a stencil with. Um, but those are both really fun. We, she also has a, a natural dye kit that we're out of stock of right now, but uh, um, the indigo ones are really fun. I did a couple of summers ago, I guess, I think it was when we were first in COVID lockdown. I said, okay, I'm gonna go in one of the indigo kits and uh, had a lot of fun with it. I dyed a bunch of, bunch of yarn, pretty blue colors. Um, Yes, Yuriko was saying that she also has one of her kits uh, for sure. She does, they also come with detailed instructions and she's very responsive as well. Um, if you have further, you know, questions or queries, she's uh, been great to, I like, I had somebody ask like the, about the shelf life of the kits, how long they last. And, you know, she kept, got back to me right away with the answer, which is kind of indefinitely. I think eventually they would degrade, wow. the, but uh, they don't, don't need to be used up right away. Um, I think we're we're getting to the end of our time here. Is there any other questions, things people are curious about? I know um, Elizabeth just put the coupon code back in the chat. So again, it's 15% off. Um, I set it to uh, expire at the end of the day Pacific time tomorrow. So for those of you who are in the East Coast like us, um, it's uh, 3 a.m. if you're doing insomnia shopping tomorrow night. <laughs> You have up until three, three in the morning. Oh, and the time changes tomorrow too, though. So, oh, well, the... <laughs> yeah. So, you have an hour less, I guess, because we're falling back to do your yarn box shopping. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming and uh, spending this time for us. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, your. Donna's just saying to thank you to Eureka as well. Thank you very much for making Fiber Love Affair happen. It's been really fun to uh, get back and connect with people again, because uh, like I said, um, I've been off. I was off all summer with my baby and Elizabeth got her new little one at home. So uh, this is the first show we've done in a while. And it's been fun to jump back in and say hello to people again. And if any of you, I know many of you, uh, we see at our knitting tees, but uh, if you're looking for more virtual um, ways to connect, we do host monthly knitting tees on Zoom. You're welcome to, to um, ask us for the link and we'll send it out to or join our mailing list and you'll, you'll get the link to those. I think the next one is coming up uh, the 20th of November? Uh, whatever the weekend is around then, I, I yeah. am not keeping yeah. track of dates very well. But if it's the 20th is a Saturday, then yes, it's the 20th. Two weeks. Yeah. And uh, Betsy, I hope you like the tea cozy too. Tell us how it goes. Yeah. All right, and then uh, Yuri good. I don't know who's coming up next today, but I think there's some more presentations this afternoon because it's still morning Pacific time. Um, so uh, yeah, stick around and check out the other vendors for sure. Thank you, Cindy, nice to see you. And uh, thank you, Margaret, for doing the uh, tech support today, being our backup while uh, Elizabeth's preoccupied with the baby. <laughs> <laughs>